Hey, job board fans. Welcome to another episode of the, of the show here on YouTube. Uh, today I'm talking with Hot Lizard. Uh, they're out in the UK and they are the maker of uh, different recruiting software and job board software uh, in the UK market. So joining me today is Jennifer Wright. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. Nice to meet you. What do you do there, Jennifer? Um, I look after the sales and marketing, both in the UK, um, but not so much in the US. We've got US support. So yes. Excellent. Uh, give us a quick history of Hot Lizard, how long you've been around and how long you guys been doing this. Hot Lizard was founded in 99 and in 2009 was bought by the Aspire Media Group, um, which means sister company of ours are JobServe, JobGate, Career Board, um, and Colchester United Football Club. Um, oh. but yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the company diverse. owns JobGate, owns you guys? Yes. Oh, okay, excellent. How is JobGate doing, by the way? I haven't heard from them lately. Yeah, no, they're doing really well, actually. Um, doing a bit more in Europe as well as kind of America and Australia. But yeah, no, yeah. they're doing really well. So yeah, separate trading entities, but um, part of the same group. Cool. So how many, how many job boards do you guys power right now? Um, around the world, we are at about 350. 350, excellent. Uh, what would be a couple of like top um, uh, customers you want to mention? Um, top clients, we work with very different clients in different sectors. So you've got ones that are very niche, so something like Ozzel that does print in the UK, um, Forces Family Jobs, which is a government driven initiative to help those who are spouses, partners of those in armed forces. Um, we also do um, a part of a joint venture with Nexstar Corporation. So you've got Fox 8 News um, and then also my valley jobs and a few of the others that are part of that group as well so i mean obviously that's in the state so yeah, mm -hmm. quite diverse target audiences yeah do you have customers here in the us yeah so obviously fox 8 um and a few of the others that are part of the next start and then a few independents as well that um sample publications they run a job board um yeah gotcha. so just different independents mm -hmm. what's the what's the uk market like uh for job boards i've, I've heard that like over in Europe and, and, and elsewhere, job boards are more highly used than here in the US. Is uh, What would you say to that? Absolutely. I think their prevalence is more in the UK <clears throat> than Europe. Europe, it's uh, depending on the country, depending on the sector, as to how much people engage with the job boards. I think because candidates <clears throat> are used to looking at job boards, engaging with job boards, having their CVs available, making themselves available, you know, making themselves searchable if they need, that that's where something like Facebook for Jobs their, you know, their jobs profile isn't doing so well. Obviously, they're looking at finishing that, and then you've got Google for Jobs coming through. But I think candidates in the UK are very well versed with knowing to go to a job board. It's just finding the right job board. Also, with job boards, CV Library, example, do a lot of marketing around different towns and cities, as well as online. So people are a lot more aware of job boards. Yeah. What well, about what's the market like in, in the UK right now? The labour market is it as tight uh, as it is here in the US? Yeah, very much so. Good candidates are very, very hard to come by. Um, a lot of clients looking at how they can review their candidate attraction strategies, um, looking outside the box for candidates. <clears throat> There's also been a move more to quality of candidates rather than quantity, um, because obviously with the quantity, you've then got to, you know, if you're going to start to reject them all, especially where there's talk at the moment about making sure that you successfully reject candidates so that they're because they're, you know, people buy into the brand, they're aware of the brand. Um, so I think that's put more pressure on, especially in-house talent acquisition teams, to make sure gotcha. that they're rejecting unsuitable candidates. Therefore, if they can get more suitable candidates and a lower number to start with, that's actually preferable. Very cool. All right, let me make you the host here. And uh, for the demo here, I'd like to show us first a, just a public facing site that you have. Yep. Um, so we get a sense of the front end and then we'll see the back end in terms of how you actually manage the job board. So. Fantastic. Okay, I made you the host. Excellent. So if I, so you can see my screen, I assume? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Brilliant. Hang on. There we go. Fantastic. Brilliant. Excellent. So you can see my screen now. Yes. <clears throat> Fantastic. Um, as an overview, our job board platform starts as an off-the-shelf solution. So it starts at £99 a month or $149 a month. And then we can take it as far and as wide as the clients want. So bespoke customizations are available, and that's both with design as well as functionality. 
Um, where possible, we try to include things in the upgrade pathway if we feel that multiple clients are going to benefit from that, that change, that upgrade, whether or not it be design or whether or not it be functionality. If it is very bespoke and very niche to that individual client's needs, then obviously it will be suitable just for that client. Um, so it's an overview of kind of an example of what some of our sites can look like. And pop eight. Is it kind of a single template you guys build off of? Yeah, that we start with, and then we take it in different directions depending on where the clients want to go. Mm -hmm. um, a big part of how we've developed our platform is to enable clients to add content themselves and manage it themselves. So things like the teaser boxes, as you scroll down, different sites like this one, add numerous teaser boxes on a regular basis, change the structure of the content, uh, depending on obviously for them being graduate within their, within their an annual cycle. Um, so we facilitate clients to keep adding if they wish or to take content away. Um, and then design wise, again, depending on what look and feel you, you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you add blogs and articles? Uh, uh, in terms of the yeah, content absolutely. Piece? So news, events, case studies, testimonials, and forums are all included. Um, and then you can choose whether or not you use them, whether or not you use them at the outset, whether or not you use them later on. And mm. um, from an SEO perspective, obviously it's good practice, but then uh, as I'm sure you're well versed, if you can start with the news or the blog, it's keeping it up so that it's done regularly rather than putting two out and then forgetting about it. Um, yeah. And again, I mean, this client's a great example of one that's has done quite a lot for their content and, you know, kind of making sure that it's really specific to their, you know, their target audience. Right. When, when you build a site for a client, like in the US particularly, will you change things like CV to say a resume instead, yes. things like that? Um, so what we've noticed is that both um, obviously in the States as well as Australia, absolutely it's resume. If they're international, depending on the international focus, and we try to keep kind of different words um, structured so that it covers off both UK and um, mm -hmm. Europe, it's a lot more CV centric. Um, we do also include Google Translate as well. So which obviously doesn't help with CV and resume because they're not a direct translation. Right. Um, but yeah, you can select languages. Very cool. I assume they're all yeah. mobile friendly as well. Yeah, all sites are fully responsive and any design changes are, mm. we have a QA team, so everything's tested to make sure that it's optimized across all devices, um, across all browsers, um, yeah, all different configurations. So yeah, where you gotcha. just mentioned about blogs is an example of a blog and you know, making sure that content's up and relevant. Very nice. Um, what was the pricing again? I think you said 149 a month it starts at? Dollars, yeah, absolutely, and 99 pounds a month. Um, and that's for up to 100 live jobs at any one time. And then you move up to the next price in black bracket, which in the UK is 249 pounds a month, and that's for up to 2,000 live jobs. But mm. they're organic jobs. Another part of our platform is from the from launch, we are fully integrated with um, a sister company of ours, which is Jobgate, as well as mm. other partners such as AppCast, Talent, Upward. So we provide all of their jobs that we've got available as backfill options for our clients. Nice. Which means they've got instant job content from yep. day one um, and they can, can start. Can they earn off that? Can they earn a pay-per-click on that? Yeah, absolutely. No? Both pay-per-click and pay-per-app, depending on what jobs are available within kind of from that provider. Um, and they earn from day one. How we work is that we keep we allocate the revenue to that account during the month and at the end of the month we do a reconciliation so if they've earned more then we pay them and if they've earned less then obviously they owe us the difference between what their job hosting fee is so we offer all of our boards are hosted by mm. ourselves we host with microsoft azure and the monthly hosting co cost includes hosting support and upgrades um, and then at the end of the fi their financial month so if you went live on the 10th of the month your financial month is from the 10th to the 10th any monies that you've earned goes against the invoice that you've got raised. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, with that, any of the backfill jobs that are available <clears throat> for you to take, you can refine by keyword, sector, and location at any time. So again, if the job board starts to change direction or you kind of don't want jobs in a certain area or you want more jobs in another area, you've got complete control to, to adjust that backfill instantly. Right. Okay. Um, all right, let's see the back end now, and uh, how long it takes to, to set up a site, uh, you know, get launched, things like that. Walk us through some of that. Fantastic. So, in terms of setting up um, a site, we can have a fully functional job board light, um, available in under twenty minutes. 
um, and that's a, a more raw starting point, which can be seen on a demo site here. And then as we've seen, kind of we find apprenticeships, IM jobs, you can then start to take the design however you wish, whether or not it's a direct replication of an existing brand or whether or not it's a brand that you're looking at developing yourself. Um, when the site's live, so when we launch the sites, they're on hidden URLs. Um, and then if you did decide to go live, then that's when we put them on the live URL. And that's when the initial 12 month contract would start on the date of go live. Um, when you come into the CMS, you see an initial dashboard. As I mentioned earlier about network jobs and revenue, one of the graphs here is the network applications and clicks received. Mm -hmm. When the job is live, and this is a demo site, so it doesn't have it, there's an additional um, stat available which tells you what you're earning that month to date. Nice. So you can see what you're earning and then obviously against your invoice and what that reconciliation would be. Mm. As a start, as an overview, all of our clients have access to this. So at any point they can change all of their colors, logos, um, and all the changes are instant. Once they make the update, they can just press save, control F5. Um, all the content is available. So again, clients can change our main navigation and secondary navigation at any point, um, with the main navigation being um, across the top here. And then secondary navigations are the drop downs. And you've got the option of both having it like with content pages. So if we close this, um, as a drop down and or whether or not you'd like it as a secondary nav sitting on the right there. So an example of that would be seen uh, here. So you can then start to have things listed down the right hand side as well. Cool. So again, everyone's got control as to what configuration they would like and what changes they'd like to make when. Um, again, why, why does it say jobboard.com? Again, it's another one of your company's uh, properties. Here. No, back on the, the admin there. On the admin. Oh, yeah, yep. this is because it's um, one of our demo sites. Jobboard.com is our platform from Hot Lizard. Oh, okay. And then this is the demo site that it relates to. Gotcha. So because you also do, uh, I guess, recruiter sites too, right? Yeah, absolutely. We do the recruitment websites as well, where the main difference is that with the job boards, we've got the fully functional client portal where we're fully integrated with Stripe. So it's our client Stripe account that they set up. Um, so you can facilitate the zero touch. If you're looking at keeping a closer contact and eye on your clients, you don't have to allow the e-commerce, you can switch it off. Um, but with the recruitment websites, you don't have that client function. So candidates can upload multiple CVs, create job alerts, and apply for jobs yep. but ultimately once you've got that candidate through your recruitment website whether or not it's a careers portal or a recruitment website you then import them or add them to your ATS if they're suitable right. um, whereas again on the job boards clients um, candidates can make themselves searchable available for clients to download their CVs um, so you've got that side of that functionality as well. Interesting what would you say is sort of the uh, uh, favorite features of your product do you have a couple in mind favorite features um i think one that's a big hit is being able to earn revenue from the outset especially if you've already got you know kind of uh, traffic available if you've already got facebook groups if you've already got um recognition with on within linkedin or, or wherever it may be um another one that's quite popular is the fact that customized products are available for you to set up and run so an example of that with this site who have been a bit more creative around Southwest is that you can create and sell any product that you like that goes through the e-commerce. It means you get the money instantly. You don't need to worry about credit control. Um, if it's a job or a CV product, then it's automatically released to the um, client's account. You don't need to do anything with it. However, if you wanted to start to do other things like job of the week, um, MPU, you're then emailed, told that this product's been purchased. You can then reach out and, and start to you know progress that. But you can do any product you like because it's completely customizable. Very cool. Um, another area that's really popular is being able to add the content and move the content around, change your main navigation, change your secondary navigation. Um, you know, again, with that, that actually um, dovetails into job sectors. So again, you can change your sectors at any point, obviously being mindful if you are in integrated with any multi posters or have got any XML feed set up that those changes are um, updated accordingly. But that flexibility that if you want to make that change, you can make that change, you can click save and the site's updated for you. Yep. Okay. Uh, how, how customizable would you say this platform is? I mean, give me a, from a one to 10, 
where I want you to basically change a lot of stuff. What's, what would you say your product is? Um, in terms of being able to change everything, it'd be a 10. Um, we can do whatever you want. Depending on what the request is, it might require a cost and that cost may be prohibitive depending on the business model. Um, but we can, in theory, change anything, whether or not it's design, whether or not it's um, uh, kind of functionality. And as I say, if the functionality is really bespoke, then we would create a quote that's subject to specification. Um, and it's down to the individual whether or not they'd like to go ahead with it. In terms of yeah. off-the-shelf changes, you can kind of like as I touched on you've got branding you've got the content the job all of the kind of real-time interfaces mm. our clients can update instantly themselves but yeah absolutely in terms of branding and design we can do anything um, and again with functionality but there may be a cost of it gotcha do you, uh, a lot of your clients sell uh, like resume access things like that varied some really do, especially if they're in the niche sector, um, a bit like Grad Southwest. Um, another one is Ozzle and they're in print. When it's very specific, um, it's very easy to then have those targeted candidates available. Um, we do have some generic job boards that are a little bit more kind of wider reaching. And again, having the backfill jobs available from the outset facilitates that. And they're less worried about having um, CV access and promoting it. Yeah. Um, again, what we can do is because you've got complete control so within the CMS, if I just go to, and this is what our clients can see when they purchase a job board from us in application settings, um, you can opt in of, you can set <coughs> your network jobs as an overview as to which ones you want and whether or not you want to bounce them straight off and obviously earn the revenue or whether or not you want to capture the details. Um, but you've also got the CV database. So at any point you can enable it or disable it and then click save accordingly. So some clients will go live with the site, wait three to six months, get the CVs to start to build up before they enable it. But obviously, you know, the drawback then is those that started to register at the start, six months yeah. time, they might not be uh, looking as, as much as they were back then, but at least you've got a chance to build traction around the site. Yeah, very cool. Well, your, your dashboard, I mean, your admin's pretty, uh, pretty heavy on features there and settings. I like that. Um, it seems like you can basically you have control of almost anything from the back end there, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we do see a disparity in terms of confidence. Some clients are really confident to come in here and say, right, okay, I want to enable this now. I want to turn this off. Actually, I want to start capturing candidate details because the candidates are valuable to me. Or actually, I just want to earn the revenue that I'm going to get from bouncing them off to the job um, origination source. Others, you know, they, they kind of contact you and say what well, my login details again and uh, how do I add a content page and I want to make this change so everybody's very very different but yeah I mean absolutely you know the idea is that if you're confident and obviously we offer training as well they are able to make the changes as they go so you know where we said about the different sectors and you can then start to edit these sectors and, and refine you know kind of adjust hmm. the jobs that you want to meet your requirements interesting nice um, and so again with existing sites, we also offer the 301 redirects, which help from an, an SEO perspective as well. Right, exactly. Yep. Um, excellent. So if somebody wants to sign up, they go to jobboard.com? Yeah, you can go to jobboard.com and sign up. Um, we do also offer a free test site for those that are interested in trialing the product before they purchase. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, if they just contact us directly, there's calls to action across the site. Um, we can then set up a test site. Um, obviously, it's not indexed by Google and it's hidden, but it does enable them to test you know potential clients to test the cms to see if they're happy with what they're working with um in the front end and if they can get in the back end and if they can get the front end to to look like what it needs to um it, it depends some people who are have got a business model in mind can be quite fixed with their ideas i'm sure you're you're very well aware of this chris in, in terms of your background and, and and how they want to run it and so it's making sure that our functionality delivers on what they want whereas others are exploring ideas and, and just want to kind of get a feel for what the software could do and obviously yeah. whether or not they could then grow with that well we certainly appreciate your time today jennifer my last question for you is uh i'm starting let's say i'm starting a new job or today needs job or somewhere in the us or uk what kind of advice are you telling you know, potential clients out there as far as how to be successful today? Um, I would always recommend looking at 
really giving some thought to a clear candidate attraction strategy and a clear client attraction strategy. The two do, do dovetail into each other in many ways, but they are separate. Understanding with your experience, do you have connections within the recruitment industry that you could then draw on for your client attraction strategy? Do you have exposure recognition within social media groups for your candidate attraction strategy? Where are you going to go to? Are you going to affiliate with organisations? how and where is the traffic going to come from because yes google for jobs is great um, in some ways and can help but actually what sets you apart and where can you then start to deliver return on investment to encourage people to pay to advertise jobs on your site because ultimately you, that's what you want people to pay to advertise jobs excellent well again jennifer wright from uh, hot lizard and uh, jobboard.com thank you for joining me today appreciate the info and uh, hopefully we'll send some clients your way and thank you for your time chris much appreciated all right